Hello to you there. It's Thursday the 18th of November 2021. Welcome along to our daily, uh, near enough daily, little chat show. All right. Um, now, here's something if you're bored there at home. Are you a busybody? Eh? Do you like taking note of what uh, neighbours and people around you are up to all the time? I bet you do. Are you a busybody? Are you? You nosy old person you are, dear. Well, here's a great idea. Now, with this is picked up in the local newspaper um, yesterday, actually, in the Bracknell News, a speed watch campaign, right? Wait for this, wait for this. A speed watch, is this something you want to do? A speed watch campaign has been launched in Bracknell uh, to catch out illegal racers and speeding drivers. Now, we have our fair share of those around here. Bikes and cars, and my God, do some of them go fast. Community speed watches involve neighbours using speed recording technology to monitor speeds. Uh, this data is then sent to police to act upon. Following a trial, the speed watch groups are being rolled out in Bracknell and across the Thames Valley down here in the south. Uh, the launch was attended uh, by Matthew Barber, the Conservative Police and Crime Commissioner for the Thames Valley, James Sunderland and various other people, you know, people. Um, they've devised a loan scheme, right, from which speed watch equipment can be hired. Now, how do you th what do you think of this? I quite like the idea. You know, now, if I was doing it, I'll be honest with you, if I was... It's appealing to me. Oh, yeah. Do you get a badge, I wonder? Do you get a little badge to wear or a uniform? You know, if, if someone's like... If it's like 30 mile an hour, I'm not really that interested in someone doing 33, 35, 37 even. You know, the police would, of course, tell you that anything over the speed limit is in, illegal, you know. And every time you go a little bit more, it's more dangerous. I get that. But in my mind, I'm not after those people. I'm after those idiots who do like 60, 70 mile an hour in a 30 zone. And believe me, I've seen that down the road near me. A lot of the roads around here. Ridiculous speeds they drive at. Uh, speaking to the local democracy reporting service, uh, this bloke said, I've set some money aside. I can buy in bulk to get the equipment cheaper. I will loan them out. Ultimately, in it's an investment that we can keep recycling. So what do you think of that? Is that a good thing to do? I mean, I'm, I don't know. Um, you can go on a register, I think, and they call you up. I'm not exactly sure exactly how it works. It's not clear in the story how that works. But is that something that you'd want to do? Or would you be a bit worried? Because you know what some people are like, dear. They take note of your face. I know where you live. We'll have that old one, won't we? Be a knock on the door, you know, late at night from someone that you've just uh, uh, reported for speeding. I think it's an excellent idea. Or maybe you think it's, hang on a minute, spying on the neighbours, that sort of thing. And I get that as well. Put a little comment in the uh, uh, comment section underneath. Or you can always send an email, all right, my darlings? Uh, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email. Perhaps if you're someone that speeds all the time, Try and put that out of your head for a moment. You know, the fact that you're one of the speeders. I was. I was. I wouldn't say I went that fast compared with some of the cut. Or maybe I did and, and I just don't remember. But certainly when I was a sort of younger uh, younger man and, you know, you get the car and you want to speed. And, and it is difficult. I think it is difficult when you're young to keep those speeds down. I find it really easy now to, to stick to the speed limit. It's no problem at all. I'm well under the speed limit on the motorways. We've mentioned this many times before. I generally do about 50, 60 mile an hour on the inside lane. And um, you, you, you see the speed that people are going past you on the motorways. They've got to be doing 90, 100, 110 mile an hour, some of them chasing each other up and down the M3 and M4. It's it's awful. Of course, I mean, you wouldn't be able to do motorway speed checking with this. I mean, that's down to the police. They wouldn't allow you on there. But down on your sort of local roads, is that something that um, uh, might appeal to you? I'm not a fan at all of road humps. And the reason is ambulances and fire engines and police cars, they've all got to slow down for these things. Bit indiscriminate, aren't they, really? Road humps. 
Yes, OK, they might slow you and me down, but unfortunately they slowed down the emergency services uh, as well that uh, want to get you. But, I mean, do you want to do this sort of thing? Eh? You quite like the idea of standing there nicking the speeders. Yes. Do you get do you get a little, a little star each time you do it? <laughs> anyway, that's the police uh, speed story there. Um, I don't know if you... Um, uh, have seen my brother-in-law's latest video he's on retro i think it's the retro restore channel hang on let me just check for you oh which channel was it on butler's empire on the butler's empire channel um how are your electric prices at the moment have you recently had your increase in prices yet for your electric and gas I, I ask you this, um, you may remember a few weeks ago, my energy company went out of business, Pure Planet, okay? And uh, they've now been taken over by Shell Energy. <clears throat> they've yet to finalise the, 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 the changeover. So we're kind of in abeyance at the moment. I, the, I, you can't send the meter readings anymore. That stopped. Um, I sent them right up to the end, so I've got a note of the meter readings I sent. And presumably the new company will pick up from that, and when it comes, you'll be able to see. Of course, I'll be paying more money. Uh, I don't know how much yet. I was paying um, combined electricity and gas about 40, I think it was £46 a month, £48 a month um, during the spring and summer. And in the colder months, that goes up to, I think, it, I can tell you, one minute, I can tell you, <clears throat> what am I paying now? And now for the winter months, I'm paying, or, or I am paying at the moment, £80.58, uh, okay? So that's what I was paying to pure energy. Now that money is still going out, exactly like that, £80.58, but I am, of course, expecting it to go up. Um, as reported on the telly, all the gas and the electricity is going up. Uh, clearly, I believe the gas is going up much more than the electricity. So I don't know what mine's going to be. But in my brother-in-law's latest video on the Retro Restore channel, on the, I beg your pardon, on the Butler's Empire channel, his bills have gone up from 100... I mean, even, even, even before it went up, he was paying £160 a month, my brother-in-law for gas and electric, which to me sounds an awful lot of money. On the other hand, it's a very big, enormous old house that they've got. I mean, it's not old, old, but it's old. Do you know what I mean? And the living room is one, two, th three, six, nine, twelve. The li his living room is about 14 times the size of mine, I would say, if you include the um, kind of garden bit on the back. Uh, which you have to include because there's no doors. You can't shut off the conservatory. There's no doors there. So it's all one big room. And it's a very big house. So, I, I mean, I get how it's expensive to heat and uh, uh, and, and do lights and everything like that. But um, it was £160. Ovo, who's the uh, energy people he's with, he's just come to the end of his term end of his agreement and they've offered to renew they've got some fixed rate schemes they're coming out from 160 to 580 pounds a month a month for electric and gas 580 pounds a month for electric and gas he's been quoted uh, the variable rate that they're on at the moment, uh, that, that, that they will go on to if they don't sign up for something, is working at £347 a month. Now, usually, um, energy companies uh, are all kind of looked at by various different comparison groups, one of which is U-Switch. Uh, you've got Compare the Market, various uh, what, what, what energy or what... Or oh, what magazine? I can't remember what the other one is. There's a few of them. And they will compare the thing. But if you go on all of those at the moment, they will tell you to drop back onto the variable uh, payment plan, which at the moment is £347. 
So he would be then going from 160 to 347, which is a far cry from the 580 pounds that he's been quoted um, on a fixed rate. But that's what they're advising at the moment. Of course, on the variable rate, it can go up and down. But at the moment, the difference between the variable and the other one is like 250 quid nearly. So that's what they're advising at the moment. People like you switch and all that. Just drop back onto the variable and keep your fingers crossed that it will go down at some point. You know, it, it, it's very worrying. Very worrying. And um, my brother-in-law is absolutely fuming. And I would be. You know, if I got an email like that or a letter like that through the post telling me it's going up from 160 to 580 or even, even 347, I'd be fuming. I'd be fuming. And they're all doing it. It's all the same for everyone. So I'd be very interested to see what mine's going to go up. As I say, I'm paying at the moment just over £80 a month. Um, I do have solar panels. I've had my solar panels now for uh, 15 years. And because of those, generally my monthly electricity bill is between 25 and £40, depending on what sort of time of the year it, it is. And you need to be clever with solar panels in, in, in when you turn things on and off. You know, I mean, when I'm, literally, literally, when the sun's out, you put your washing machine on. You can put your washing machine on any time you want. But to get the best out of your solar panels, you need to be a little bit clever. Uh, clever. Turn your, your, your high wattage appliances on um, whenever the sun's out. Some people, a lot, they, they now have batteries as well. Now, I don't have batteries. Um, not so good for me because I'm not a south facing roof. So I don't get the sun on that roof all day long. I'm west facing. OK, but I get it for some of the day. So, you know, the sun comes over uh, about 12, 12, 30, only for a couple of hours at the moment, because we're now in winter, coming into winter. And that's when you would turn on your gadgets. And the sun would be powering those, basically. And that's how it is. Um, my uh, uh, my solar panels um, 15 years ago, the total cost for those was £20,000. But at the time, the government were paying 50% of that. So it cost me just under just under um, £10,000 when I had those put up 15 years ago. And I've saved so much money with those. So much money. Now, exactly the same system, I think possibly with the battery, is going to cost you about five or £6,000. So if you've got money to spare... Not everyone has. If you've got money to spare, I highly recommend you put solar panels up because they work. Believe me, they work. They work. I suppose at some point something will need to be done. Some sort of maintenance issue will crop up. I'm sure it will. But that's not bad going, is it? 15 years and I haven't had to do a damn thing to them other than clean them occasionally. All right. <clears throat> it's a lot of money to pay, isn't it? A lot of money to pay. Wondering, actually, if you've come to the end of a contract and your price is have gone up. If they have, I'd love to know what to. Stick a little comment under the comments section there or send us an email there, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. What were you paying and what are you paying now? Maybe you don't know. I mean, some people, some of the older people don't know. My my aunt, Auntie Brenda, she's never left the variable rate that she's on. You know, some people are just, uh, oh, I, I can't be doing that or oh, I'm happy with who though I am. You know, you get that sort of argument as well. But, um, you know, terrible what's going on with that. Of course, it's all right for me. You know, I can afford £80 a month easily. You know, other people can't. What are you going to do? It's terrible. It's really terrible what's going on. And this is because we, 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 um, we, uh, uh, we have to rely on people like Russia. You know? They can make charge what they want. Maybe maybe tomorrow they're double that. And what do we do? What can we do? We have to pay it. That's it. That's why you shouldn't rely on other countries. I'm really not into this whole thing of, of having other countries come in and building nuclear power stations or running our electricity or our water. And yet that's what's going on all the time. It's crazy. It's crazy having a foreign power in control of your stuff. But I don't see how we can go back now. You know, you're at the mercy of other countries. Madness. Absolute madness. All right. Now, on the same uh, sort of subject of this uh, whole electricity stuff and all that, leaving your telly on standby. How many of you do that? I bet you do, don't you? I've got three tellies here and they're all on. St no, two of them are on standby. The one in the kitchen and the one in the bedroom. Permanently on standby. How much is that costing? Little article in the sun. 
Leaving your television on standby is the done thing nowadays, but just how much is it costing you? It says it only burns a tiny amount of power when the screen is blank. The annual bill racks up. It might well surprise you. It reckons, according to energy advice blog Eco Cost Savings, a modern TV uses around 58.6 watts when operational and 1.3 watts when on, when on standby, which hardly sounds anything, does it? 1.3 watts, you know. I mean, your your light bulbs, if you've changed over to LED light bulbs, your LED light bulbs are probably about 20 or 30 watts. So 1.3 watts doesn't sound an awful lot to me. It says, clearly then, leaving your telly on standby is hardly going to burn through your paycheck every month. According to EcoCost survey, doing so will cost the consumer roughly £12 a year to leave your telly on standby. £12 a year. So I've got two tellies. It's costing me £24 a year to leave them on standby. It's not a small amount, is it? Not really a small amount. I suppose I could get a couple of those um, uh, uh, Wi-Fi plugs, really. You know, and have them on that. The, the, the main telly in the living room is on a Wi-Fi plug, you know, and I, I tell my Amazon device to turn the telly on and off with that. And that cuts the plow completely. Presumably, these um, these little... I, mean, I don't know. They must do, mustn't they? You know those little Wi-Fi plugs where you can control it with an app? Presumably, they use an, a small amount of electricity, don't they? They must do, because they're, like, sniffing out for the messages from, uh, from the internet all the time, aren't they? So there you go. If you want to save yourself £12 a year, might be an idea, mightn't it? Eh? Recent research from Energy Supplier Utila, for example, estimated the cost to be around £16.24 a year for the same thing. So, you know, if you're a penny pincher, you'll have to turn your telly off at the wall in order to save yourself the energy. I don't think it's anything to do with being a penny pincher. Is I'm a bit of a penny pincher. I am. When it comes to myself, I'm very careful at what my buy myself. I make things do. Drives my best mate mad. He goes mad. Oh, I think you need a new one of that. No, years of left, wear left in that. Listen, the carpet in this room, I could see the bloody floorboards before I replace this. <laughs> Are you the same? I, I don't spend money unless I absolutely have to. It's all very well, someone. I'm just, I can just hear you now. Oh, you can't take it with you. Well, how long do you know how long I've got? Might be tomorrow. Might be in 200 years' time. You know, I, I may have my brain implanted into one of those nice robots we got coming along now. Can't wait to order one of those, to be honest. <laughs> Won't have to leave the house. <laughs> anyway, so there's 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 a thought for you. You want to save a little bit of money. I know, I know how it is for some of you. Every penny counts. Believe me, I know. I know. I live my life like that. I do live my life like that. Every penny counts. I ha I need a reason to buy something. You know, if I want, I probably if I won the lottery, I would probably be exactly the same. I'm brought up not to waste things. I can't bear anything thrown away. Uh, my mate's just had his kitchen redone again because it wasn't done properly the first time. It's not costing him any more money. And um, there's all these offcuts, all these offcuts. And I'm like, oh, you know, what What can we do with those? And they're like, they're like offcuts from like, you know, the work toff and stuff like that. And I've, I've just... I've just come back from his house now and um, I've got this piece of, what's it called? You know, worktop type thing. I've got this piece and I'm like, I'm sure I can find a use for that somewhere. And it's it's so big. I mean, it's a very big work, make a lovely shelf, to be honest. And he's got all these offcuts there that the kitchen company, Wren, right? And there's one, there's a couple of bits that are still in boxes, haven't been opened, but they don't send them back. They chuck them away. This piece of wood's worth about 400 quid. And the kitchen cut, they just chuck it away. What a terrible waste. And I'm the same with food, clothes, anything like that. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I haven't got a jumper. I haven't got a shirt and tie on, shirt and jacket on today. I was a bit chilly and I've just put this on. This is all right. Isn't it? This, my sister bought me this for a couple of years ago. I'm sure this is the one my sister bought uh, from, uh, I think it's Georgia Asda. I asked her one year for a, for a warm jumper and uh, she got me this, which is perfectly... I didn't think it was that thick, actually, but it is. It's probably the first time I've worn it. Takes me ages to get through Christmas presents. Look at this here. I told you about this. This 
this Lego thing that my beautiful niece bought me a couple of years ago to put together. I haven't started it yet. That's two years old. <laughs> Are you a bit behind with stuff? All right, let's do some of your messages then. Thanks so much for Jeff, uh, uh, John Parrish, who sends in a picture of his breakfast today. There we go. Thank you, John. <laughs> I don't know why he's sending in a picture of his breakfast. He says, uh, Sherry's treat for me. Bless her. I love her so much. And uh, Sherry is his uh, wife. And she really is uh, a beautiful lady, Sherry. She's a stunning lady. Not only is she beautiful on the outside, she's be I, You know, I can often tell people. she's. Be I've never met her. Never met her. Never spoke to her on the phone. But I, I know she's also beautiful on the inside, which is a far cry from a lot of these people that you see on the telly. You know, Towery and Big Brother and all like, well, like that. They may look very beautiful on the outside, but they're pig ugly on the inside, aren't they? You know the sort of people I mean. Thank you very much for that, uh, John. Much appreciated. And um, here comes some of your messages on the subject of uh, yesterday's show. You saw our latest DIY video, which actually went very well <laughs> believe me i was surprised at that believe me and uh, john parish uh right so we just heard from that was his breakfast we saw a moment ago well done chris um substi sub substituted food items apparently we were talking about the supermarkets you know some of you i know do online um supermarket shop and it's it's not something that really appeals to me at all i did do a couple of online shops when the pandemic uh, was in full swing and I, I was very nervous about going out and mixing with people and all that um and i did do a couple one from morrison's and one from actually it might have been only one i did i can't remember now oh anyway, i did i did just one from morrison's and it was all right you know this man appears at the door and drops all his stuff in it. It's all very good. But it's, it's not for me. I like to have a look round. You know, there might be something in there, an offer or something, you know? It's, it's completely different. Staring at a blooming screen and dragging and dropping things into a basket and actually going out and getting your fat ass off your chair, you know, if you're perfectly able, uh, and going down and having to walk around a blooming supermarket, isn't it? Anyway, John, and I was asking about what happens, you know, because often they substitute items. And I wasn't sure how that worked. Now, do you... Uh, again, I didn't ask this question. When they substitute items, have you agreed for that to happen in the first place? You know, is there a little box? Will you accept substituted items? Yes or no? I don't know. Is, is that in the sort of contract or whatever? But uh, John says, on the subject of substituted food items, if you don't want them, they can be returned to the driver. Well, I, I, I don't think they wait for you to unpack all your stuff, do they? See, how, how, you, you'd have to be blooming quick, wouldn't you? I don't think you um actually, or, or do they tell you when, when they get there? Oh, hello, Mr. Uh, hello, Mr. Parrish. Uh, there's your thing. Just to let you know, we substituted this cheese for this cheese and those crisp. Uh, is that how it works? Again, I don't know. Um, but he says substituted food items can be returned to the driver. So... There we are. That's what John says. And he's looking forward to seeing the scissor repair and white kitchen post touch up. Neither of those things will be happening, I'm afraid. I was considering repairing the pair of scissors, but they ended up in the bin instead. And as for white post touch up, I can't be bothered to do anything like that, John. Thank you very much. Uh, Diane Jeb. Hello, Diane. She says, uh, great job yesterday, Chris. Good luck with the scissors. Hope you can fix them. No, I chucked them in the bin in the end. And you can get a pair of scissors for like a pound, can't you? <laughs> and I, I believe me, I would have fixed them if I'd have thought it would last. But scissors and that super glue, I mean, that's crap stuff, that is. It really is. The only thing it seems to be good at sticking together are fingers. And you know when, even if it doesn't stick your fingers, you get a bit on there and that's it. And you can't get it off, can you? Isn't that awful, having something on your fingers like that? Thank you, uh, uh, Diane. And fun things to do with Sparky. Uh, and actually, this is what my nephew said as well. Uh, I use mastic when I was fixing a, a seal on a on a on a hob, wasn't I? I used mastic and mastic gun, used a heat resistant silicone bead around, and then put the hob on top, and it will be fine. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fun Things to do with tech, Sparky. And um, interesting, you say that uh, Gary, my nephew, also said exactly the same thing. He said, get some of that beading stuff. 
uh, lift it, don't remove the strip. He said you should be able to go around the edge of that strip and then put it down and then just wipe it with a cloth. Um, I, 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 I tend to, I think, put possibly a piece of that. You know that paper tape stuff? I could put that around it and then when it's done, just pull it off um, while it's still um, pliable. And that would make a, a nice, neat line, wouldn't it? All righty, boys and girls, thanks so much for joining us uh, on our little show today. Uh, probably, I think there'll be another show for you tomorrow on Friday. All right, my darlings. Uh, just a reminder, I do host karaoke, boys and girls. Um, that, oh, by the way, there's no Reach On Air show today. All right, uh, that's where my karaoke is Friday and Saturday night at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Okay. Come down there. Don't cost you anything to come in. And that's it. There we are. That's it for the show. Uh, it's Thursday, the 18th of November uh, today. And uh, believe it or not, it's it's the 21st anniversary of uh, my mother dying. And uh, I, I miss her every single day throughout the day. And it's it's never gone. It's never gone. My mother was a very, very special person and she lived her life basically to help other people, um, in particular uh, me and my sister. She just did everything for us. She applied to British Telecom for my job. She got me my first job in Millets. Um, but there were times where I was making mistakes, um, a, a couple of one. I don't want to say what it was. One particular really big mistake I made and they didn't interfere at all. You know, they they kept asking, is this the right thing to do? Are you sure this is the right thing to do? Yes, mum. Yes, mum. And um, they never interfered in anything like that. But they were the most wonderful parents I had. Uh, I couldn't possibly um, have wished for anyone else. And every day I sit here and I beat myself up and uh, uh, think of all the bad things I did. But I was a terrible, really awful person. I didn't speak to my dad for ages for no reason at all. No reason at all. We just didn't feel the need to converse with him. And of course, they die and these things uh, come back to hit you and you know, you basically abused your own parents, I suppose. Really, it's awful. But um, I'm so lucky to have had the parents I had. Uh, and my mother, as I say, I can't believe she's gone 21 years today. 21 years today. I remember being by the side of the um, uh, of the of the grave, and thinking, you know, as time goes on, will this get any easier? And it doesn't, to be honest, it doesn't. And I remember thinking while I was standing by that grave, I bet the next twenty years goes really quickly, and here we are at year twenty one. Unbelievable. So rest in peace, Mum. And I've got mass uh, this morning at 10 o'clock and then I'll be going to the grave, hopefully with some little plants, you know, like winter pansies or something like that, doing it up. I go every year. I go every year. Anyway, boys and girls, uh, thanks so much for joining us and I'll see you on the next show. Have a lovely Thursday. Bye bye.